We'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Um, who will take the roll? I will go ahead and take the roll. All right. Chairwoman Chumway. Here. Commissioner Dernan. Here. And Commissioner Kirvin. Here. We have a quorum. All right, thank you. Um, we'll go ahead and get started with business at hand. Um, Consideration to approve the May 19th meeting minutes. I move to approve. All right. Any second? I second that movement. All right. We have a second to approve the minutes. Uh, call for the vote. Call for the vote. Aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Item 1B. Item B. Um, public hearing and consideration of case UP-21-03, a request for conditional use permit to allow a six-unit multiple dwelling land use and management office in the C3 Central Commercial Zoning District pursuant to Zoning Code 14-55-12 for the property located at 792 West Ash Street. Assessor parcel number 20803-288. Thank you very much, Chairwoman Commissioners. I apologize for that lengthy description. Thank you for sticking with it. Um, this is another request. It'll be the second this year for to convert a commercial property. And this particular property is actually uh, uh, previously a motel in the community you may know it uh, to convert to residential that motel would be located in the c3 zoning district and as you know the c3 zoning district uh, require uh, allows multifamily with the approval of a conditional use permit uh, just really quickly give you the background and I'll stop doing this eventually um, conditional use per permits are not issued to a person or firm it runs with the land so once this it should the owner should the commission for instance the last conditional use permit that you approve for residential uh, should that owner um, sell the property it stays with the land just to give you a heads up they did sell that property to a commercial venture so that uh, conditional use permit is actually no longer valid the one that you had issued earlier this year for the uh, Fogel property so sorry I'm off topic here just want to give you a heads up that's how that worked uh, in that situation. Um, also, conditional use permits require a public notice and a public hearing, which includes posting a sign on the property frontage, um, mailing all property owners within 300 feet of the request, and make them aware of the request, and then finally um, to place an advertisement for the public hearing in the uh, newspaper legal ad. So I apologize if you're getting bothered by that fly. There's, oh, I no. believe it's only one fly. He's just fast. Down here. He's everywhere. Okay. He's been Please, all of us. Pin, pin him down. So I apologize. But we have a reward if anybody gets him. Um, and that's it. So uh, again, the property is zoned C3. It's just east, uh, southeast of the railroad trestle overpass at, uh, mm -hmm. at Broad Street, uh, intersection with the US 60. Um, and a broader view shows, you know, I'll back up for a second here, sorry. So the center of the property where it says site is the original office uh, for the, and check-in for the motel, hotel motel, and maybe a small amenity. Uh, and then the uh, hotel motel flanks or wraps around the, the perimeter there perimeter of the parking area uh and the requ this request is from gila house which is a nonprofit who uh, would like to convert the buildings to allow for six uh single unit or uh single bedroom uh dwelling units on the property all right and then just to give you an idea of what's surrounding the property i backed up a little with this view this comes close to showing about a 300 foot radius of the property that was notified um, for the request and then there's the uh, image as seen from us 60 staff is recommending uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission approve this request with with four conditions 
um, one being first being to maintain the existing parking space location the dimensions as shown in, in uh, the exhibit attached basically that site plan it shows in that aerial you can see the parking spaces located we want to make sure we don't reduce any parking on the property um, secondly uh, we just have our catch-all uh, condition that no structure or subject property uh, that is damaged by fire or cause uh, or other cause to the extent of more than 50% of its uh, reproduction value shall be repaired or rebuilt in except, uh, except in conformance with regulations of the zoning code. That's a standard ordinance. It would require, apply anyway. We just want to make sure that's, that's obvious and attach that to the uh, conditional use permit. Uh, th thirdly, new signage shall be by separate permit. And then finally, all building permits necessary for converting the subject property to residences shall comply with applicable zoning, fire, and other city codes and policies prior to permit issuance. Um, so with that, uh, we have received uh, uh, feedback from neighbors that were notified. I've received uh, two calls, actually, or two contacts from neighbors, uh, one of which was just curious of what the request was and ultimately didn't express any opposition to the request uh, and then I did receive an email yesterday evening uh, from uh, an adjacent property owner or business owner actually of the tap room uh, which uh, requested that or, or note, noted and I, I should have said that also the other individual that had contacted me expressed a similar concern that they did not receive the notice until a few days ago and that became evident to me after speaking with staff that apparently mail service was disrupted for a period last week and the week uh, part of the week before uh, so for some reason there might have been a delay for them receiving those uh, those letters um, or their notifications so in this uh, with that email request uh, essentially re uh, asked to continue this agenda item to give more time for them to review the uh, application and the information that's been provided so uh, we did receive that um, um just real quick um, what is the time frame for the notices how much time do people need for the notices our zoning ordinance is seven days prior to the meeting okay thank you. keep on I'm sorry they were mailed out to get to them yeah should have been like 15 days before the meeting they were mailed out around the uh, around the 30th or the first mm -hmm. um, so that's that's that time frame so uh, like a rezoning or uh, uh, the conditional use permit will also re be required to hold a public hearing so after we're done with an initial discussion and question and answer uh, both myself from the Commission or the applicants uh, to gain additional information you would then uh, need to open up the public hearing to receive comment from the public and there may be somebody here from the public to speak okay all right so with that, that's my presentation. Again, staff's recommending approval with uh, the, that four criteria. I'd be happy to respond to any questions you have. Do you all have any questions? Um, when I was just wondering, so that middle, it looked like it was probably an office or something in the middle there. Was that going to be converted to like a living unit or will that be like a... <clears throat> Just state your name and address if you could. And make sure the mic's on. Um, my name is Melissa Bizan, and uh, I live at 5492 Pinal Canyon Road in uh, Little Acres, or Globe. And that middle building was in pre with the previous owner, um, but they had shut it down, was a couple of, of larger motel rooms. And then it had a utility closet with a hot water heater on either side. Um, so that that's what that middle building is. And then I, I just was looking at the picture there. It looks like they're kind of like sections or the roof is that kind of delineating what each of the individual will be? You, you can kind of see that from the, the picture. Um, they actually kind of built like cart ports in between the buildings were standalones and then they kind of built carports over them and it kind of looks like uh, from this picture it looks like that it's like one long building and actually they're separate buildings right now that I think about it it's one of those things you just kind of 
the initial um, buildings there on your left, you can see from this picture, those will be the uh, initial energy efficient apartments. I'd like to commend you folks for doing I think it's a really great project for the community and helping a lot of people going through tough times. And yeah, it looks like it needs it, it's a it needs, it needs quite a bit of attention. Uh, this uh, transitional housing um, grant, for lack of a better, it's a grant that we've applied for. Uh, we don't know if we're going to receive it. We're trying to keep the area clean and kept up while we're, we're moving forward. But like everything, it's, it's kind of a slow process. COVID uh, slowed us down a bit. So... Um, We've applied, or we are in the middle of applying for these dollars uh, for the energy efficient apartments. All of those potential residents in our transitional housing program will be uh, background checked and drug tested. Uh, so, and then they will have up to two years. We're not equipped to what we do is our Hila house for lack of a better, we're all about housing, either emergency repair for seniors or disabled. Um, the emergency shelter that you saw here in, in explain is that's our domestic violence shelter, which is totally separate. We have separate programs in and under Gila House. So this program will be uh, a little expansion of our transitional housing program, but this will be specifically for uh, uh, singles. We have uh, some other sites in the area that, and their houses that are families with children. So, <clears throat> excuse me, this will be for um, specifically singles or a couple, I guess, but the... Non-family is that what you're saying? Right, no children. So there's no, you know, the area obviously from what you can see and even with the changes would not be... Uh, good for children to be in there but um anyway that's that's our proposal that's our uh our like phase one so to speak on the other side on the uh right hand side of it that would be the office and a conference room an office for gila house over here yes the energy efficient apartments would be well the small the new ones uh they'll have uh single split systems in them um those that are that will become residents or potential residents as i said what we would do background check uh drug testing and then um that there would be they would pay rent 30 percent of their income so for those that are on ssi you know it's a way to get uh people some housing that there is no affordable housing right now specifically i mean i'm sure you've heard about it in the area but we own we own the property um we wrote a grant and and actually bought the property outright right now so so what we charge the the residents uh in the in the program will be for you know upkeep and and utilities and that sort of thing so how long have you owned the property for mm, i think it was in july of of 20 this is 21 years of run together 2020 i believe okay for a couple of years then for a year well no just we're not we're at a year right now Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Can I ask you questions, Dana? The, um, just looking at the four recommendations, number two there, um, do I understand that correctly? It, it looks kind of like it's designed to keep someone from trying to fix something up that's almost dilapidated, um, you know, 50%. Correct. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. right out of the zoning code. It's mm -hmm. a provision that 
uh, actually is from our non-conforming structures and uses section. And so if a portion of a building caught on fire, it needs to, and it's deemed damaged beyond 50% of the value, it needs to be removed and then reconstructed within uh, our zoning standards. Mm -hmm. So as you can see from the site plan, mm -hmm. all, I believe all the buildings are sitting right on their lot lines and there's no setbacks. So it would need to adhere to new um, the setbacks that are mm -hmm. in place at the time that the permit requested and it says fire or other cause which could be getting old or you know oh uh, yeah that's the industry standards on <laughs> how we look at that and it's related to the building code too and yeah. how the, what the building code allows uh for uh what's termed a and complete reconstruction four, it's a caveat with that because it it's saying that it, that they'll meet all code requirements correct it's a catch all yeah okay one thing, uh, Chairwoman, Commissioners, one thing I noticed and I neglected to include in the staff report or in my comments, um, there's a, and this question is actually going to be from Melissa, uh, that the trash receptacle at the frontage there on 60, the city requires all trash receptacles to be in a screen. Okay. I am, and I recognize this is all existing. We are here for a permit. Uh, it could not, I'd like to also, well, just, is that there right now? Might not be. No, no, we just have the two city of globe cans. So what I was going to do is see if you can agree, or we'll rad. find a better place to locate it it's for collection. So we don't see it from the right away. If it, if there isn't a better place, then I'll work with you over time to come up with a way to eventually get it screened or kind of do that, that one improvement. So we can meeting that criteria yeah that's not a problem thank you so i would just add that as a stipulation to work with staff to come up with a effective screening uh with no time frame they do the, uh, we'll just let them figure out what they need for their parent and then yeah once it is the smaller if that's what it is maybe there's a spot they can locate it but uh, i don't know who they'll end up contracting with or city or what but we but you're right individual rollouts well, they don't have a place to store their rollouts, though. So anyway, sorry. Well, I'll just work with Melissa's group. Thank you. It, excuse me, I have one more thing. It's not my group. It's uh, the board president, Mickey Knight, and the secretary treasurer, Debbie Cox, are here. I'm just speaking for the group tonight. <laughs> and I am a board member, too. So. Great. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Thank you. We can open up to the floor. Yes. Anyone else have any questions pertaining to this? Okay. We're going to go ahead and open it to the floor. If anyone has a comment they'd like to make or would like to present information. Yes, ma'am. Just come to the microphone and state your name. Hi. As Melissa just said, my name is Debbie Cox. Um, just something that I know that I was hearing from uh, you gentlemen when you were speaking earlier. The City of Globe has several dilapidated buildings. Okay, this is going to be a very serious long-term project that's going to have more scope than what we're just applying for right now, but we have to get started at some point in time. So I would just like to say that for many years, and I've been here over 15, finding space for single individuals or older couples or things of this nature because everything is geared towards families and people with children. So we have not had an opportunity in our community like this to be able to help a segment of our population that is in desperate need. Um, I do property management. We have about 200 units in the Globe Miami area. So we run across this problem frequently with pricing because our rent is going up and up and up, and for being able to do emergency placement and stuff. So I'm very proud to be a board member for Gila House. They've done a tremendous amount of beneficial things for our community, and I believe that this would be one more for a need that is definitely here in our area. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Cox. 
Um, you mentioned long-term project. What time frame are y'all talking about long-term project to get this going in the direction you want it to go in? And how much would the grant? Um, This uh, this grant is for the, or what we're requesting and, and is for six hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. It will basically be uh, infrastructure, so to speak, or the bones of the buildings, and then new electrical. The electrical needs to be upgraded and so on and so forth. It's a quite a bit older building, and then it will have the six efficiency. To uh, efficiency apartments with one ADA compliant apartment at the end uh, at the end of this and we're hoping uh, if awarded in 60 days within 60 days then uh, we will start construction you know late fall maybe and when I what I mean by construction is that's just we have a scope of work written already we have an estimate that's part of the grant so we would need to go out to bid. It's a commercial mm -hmm. building, so it's a commercial for commercial contractors. We'd have to come back to the city for permits and so on and so forth. So, um, but the first step is to uh, get the zoning and, uh, and finish applying for the grant. We've done the initial threshold, but um, this is part of some attachments that we need to add to that grant so that they know that we're in compliance too. Okay. And then this location will only be six or are you looking to expand it to more units? Well, the initial grant will be six um, and we'll have upgraded electrical and that. So probably I'll be back before you to ask if we can add more apartments. Okay. How many current these are hotel rooms, right? Yeah. There, How many current so hotel rooms are there? I think there's 20, 22, but an efficiency apartment, we're using two rooms for each. So it's not, you know, we're probably looking at 10 to 12 at the end of the day or at the end of our goal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. More questions? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else have a comment or a concern they'd like to make, bring up to the board? Hi, I'm Stella Brigette. Um, I own the tap room. I have a few questions. When they say transitional housing, does that mean it's like temporary? So they move up or they move out? The way this lady's talking is this is for people that are, uh, need help, don't have a lot of money. And I could understand that. But does that mean it's like a permanent home till they pass on or whatever? That's a good, great, great question. Are we talking about a permanent residence for these individuals? And after so two years? So you're saying six apartments will be transitional and potential six more apartments could be permanent housing. And this is all within this one location. So they could be moving from one side to the other side. Right. Okay. As long as we make six available, mm -hmm. or get six more companies else they can. Okay. And if you don't, then what? We do. <laughs> yes, okay. For two years, though, to begin with. 
the, the grants that you have to have. But in two years, hopefully. In the same place? Possibly in the same place. Okay, does um, this, it does, it's not, then it won't be commercial property anymore, right? Uh, it's still commercial property. It would, this is a use permit to allow six apartments Forever. to operate. Uh, it's a conditional use permit, so unless it, uh, we decide it expires at some point or something's done to the property, somebody buys it and starts to use it as a motel, then, they, then um, it would revert back to the conditional use permit would then become unused at that point and it would uh, be voided so no as long as the use permits uh, current on the property it would continue to exist so as she mentioned if she were to add six additional units to this she would go through the same process to amend her use permit to allow six additional units for whatever provision and if any they make any changes on the site or anything like that that would have to come before the board uh, planning and zoning commission again to change this, that. This isn't going to happen like in the next year or so, is it? I'm hoping that. Okay. Um, I just want to be aware of the fact that I didn't get my letter till Monday. And I wrote uh, Mr. Burkhart. I sent him an email. Um, snail mail, whatever. The fire. I didn't get my letter till Monday. I had no chance to come and get paperwork and look at anything. I was a little concerned, not knowing what's going on. I see a lot of people walking down in front of the bar that I've never seen before. I don't know where they're staying, where they're coming from, but it's people I don't recognize. And they're younger people and some are older people. I have no idea. You check it. I saw some lady doing the yard right now when I came by. It's on the side. Okay, thank you. Um, Dana, you said um, this is a conditional use permit, and as long as that permit is being used, they can continue to use it. How long does a conditional use permit last for? Uh, the extent? Life of the uh, until they're not in compliant with the use permit or it's voided at that point at some point. Okay, so uh, once you will, or you decide there's been something going on, we're not happy, we're going to revoke your conditional use permit, you're in violation of whatever codes. Okay, and for that reason, the consequence would be we're going to revoke your conditional use permit. Okay, does that kind of help you, ma'am, with your concerns? Um, you were. Ms. Baguette, you said that um, if it's permanent or not permanent and you're not sure about the people walking around in that area. Sorry. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Well, we want to make sure we answer your questions and make sure you understand. We know that the mail was off this week, so. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Any other concerns you'd like to? Okay, awesome. All right, Hi. on to the next. Yeah.
My name is Mickey Nye, and I'm my business is at 1643 East Ash Street here in Globe. I am the president of Gila House, and I'll try to solve some problems, but I'll give you my phone number, and if you have a question anywhere in the process as we're moving along, please give me a call. It's 928, and I'll, I'll make sure you get it, 701-1111. It's really simple. So if you have a question about what's going on, I'll be more than happy to answer questions. Um, let me tell you just a hair about Gila House, because you may or may not know the background of this organization that is trying to do what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Gila House was formed several years ago, and it's a 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, at this time, we currently own two homes, and we lease two homes, one of which is used for the domestic violence shelter. Gila House got started because, as we all know, when something catches fire like a trailer, they go up like matchsticks and people have no place to live and we didn't want to see people having to move out of the area with their jobs still here and then they would lose their job. There's a whole lot of problems when people lose their homes. Gila House has started to help those out who lost their homes through no fault of their own, generally through fire. The homes that we have are fully furnished. They've got food. We help people get clothing if that's necessary. Melissa's family runs the clothing bank. I mean, we help these people get back on their feet. We charge them nothing, okay? Um, we are not the government. We do, and I've always done a background check and a drug test to know what we're dealing with. Um, some people we regrettably said no to because there's some things we just can't deal with. But we've always been about helping people get back on their feet. We, our, our motto, I guess, is a hand up, not a hand out. Okay, so um, back in the day with the domestic violence shelter, it was going to close. It was a good mesh for us. We leased a piece of property from the county. It's out in the middle of God's country, and, and generally people don't know where it's at, but we help people out all the time with the domestic violence shelter. Um, Claudia is our executive director. She's the one that does the nuts and bolts and handles the day-to-day -day of our organization. But, um, I, again... I, I sit back and what a tragedy we're all going through right now with these fires. You know, what a tragedy. And I, and I can't help but think to myself, what would have happened if we'd have gotten this grant a year ago and that property would have been open? We'd have had 29 rooms-ish available for somebody to go to rather than get out of town as, as best they could. I never want to see another tragedy like we're going through right now, but who knows what's down the road? And, and I look at this as a huge opportunity that's not met in our community by helping people out. This isn't free. This isn't the homeless people aren't going to migrate to this place and all of a sudden they found a new home. You know, these, this is to help people out that have a job, that, wanna, that need a place to stay, that just don't, they don't have resources. You know, you're asking about what happens after somebody. I could only hope that somebody gets through our program at this property and then if we have to move them someplace else, we've got f three other homes that are, if they're open, we could do something. And there's people in these homes all the time. We just, we're not good about marketing our organization as to what we do. And, and we, we do a lot of fundraising, but it has nothing to do with, you know, we're not very good at that. You know, but we are good at taking care of people. You, you can, I, I think you can ask Paul. Paul is... We own homes in Globe, and you've never had the police there that I know of. You know, so so we run a pretty tight ship. You know, we as board members knocked on doors and saying, "You're not following the rules, and if you don't follow the rules, we're gonna have, we're gonna have to do something." And we really don't want to do that. You know, so I, I appreciate your service. I happen to do what you do in a different forum, and I appreciate your service. Um, we're not ask. I don't think we're asking for the moon here. Um, but we, you know, we, we need your help to move this forward because this, if this grant goes away, it's unreal for us, you know. So I ask your support of this project. All right, any, thank any you. Any questions? Cool. Thank you, Mr. Nye. Thank you. Anyone else have comments and concerns they'd like to address? <clears throat> Hi, I'm Rick Dubois. Uh, my building's on 702 Ash, next to Dr. J's. 
And I'd just like to know a little more about the people that you're going to put in there, because we've been having a lot of trouble with people breaking into our our shops, stealing stuff out of our... Uh, I'm next to Dr. J's, and he's had a lot of trouble with people living in his cars, crashing the cars in his back lot. Uh, I've had the police at my place three times for people stealing stuff out of the back. Uh, I just am concerned about the... You know, they say they're going to drug test them and background check, but is that just one time or periodic drug tests? Mike, so this is important to capture this. Factor and what's getting mixed up here is whenever we say transitional housing. <laughs> People are interpreting that to mean that that is like for homeless individuals or thing, people who have drug problems and things. That is not what we do. Okay? We don't place people in any of our houses that are having drug addiction issues, alcohol issues, things like that, that that's where we're putting them up so that they can have a place to stay. We don't do those kinds of programs. And the other way is, and I... Having those buildings empty causes more problems than having someone come in and actually fix those up so that they're livable, so that we don't have some of the individuals that we have in our town with regards to drug problems hiding out, breaking in, causing more damage, potentially more damage to the property and things of that nature. So it's, and I, that's why with that transitional housing phase, I've heard a lot of confusion factor about that over the last week with several people I've talked to. Picture, yeah, this, I need a room for a night. These are individuals that we've typically worked with before. Their house is not able to be fixed, not able to do anything with it. So we place them there to allow them to get back on their feet again. These are regular people, literally like you and I. These are people who just fell on bad times, who their income is very limited, they're on a uh, income of some kind, or their house caught on fire. We actually have had several of those in Gila House where the insurance was taking too long to cover them to be able to do anything with their house. We place them, they've got kids, we find whatever supplies they need and do that kind of thing. So it's not, um, it's not a hangout for the derelicts in the Globe Miami area. This is for People who live here, not coming from, you know, Apache Junction or anything along those lines. These are people who actually live here who have some kind of technical difficulty with regards to financial issues so that they need some help with placement without it being a government-funded project. So does that... Well, let me put it this way. I live by a, a Habitat for Humanity house. Uh-huh. And uh, supposedly it was for a lady with five kids, and next thing, uh, her husband's in there. They're having parties after she moved in there and, and moved in there. Her, some guy moved in with her. Uh, they had parties. They'd be out there till 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, there's people coming and going all night long. They never clean up their, around their place. Uh, well, I can She's promise got you. friends who come over, they get out of their car and they throw their trash over the side of the mountain. I totally get it. I do rentals in town, so we run into complaints and stuff like that when you have tenants who don't care about any pride where they live or things like that. And just because you're, you don't have money doesn't mean you can't be prideful for where you're at. That's the kind of people that we try and assist, the people who want to better themselves. If I would tell you that I can guarantee you <laughs> that if something like that were to happen, it would not happen more than once, okay? Yeah. Um, we do periodic inspections. We have meetings with them all the time with everybody that we've placed in any of our houses. We monitor what their progress is. If we need to, we can help them set out steps that show what they need to do to progress and get one step further ahead and to better themselves. So we don't tolerate fighting, domestic violence, <clears throat> excuse me, partying, that's not what we're for. You are not, you are not coming to a crash pad because you want to take a week's vacation. You're coming to a place 
that's going to allow you to be able to progress further than what you are and to hopefully get ahead and to be a functioning member of our community. The stuff that you're talking about between our board, <laughs> that does not happen. If we even hear a whisper of something like that going on, and I know you'll hear a lot of people say this, and you don't know me, but there are several people in this town that can vouch for my non-tolerant ways with regards to things like that. We don't want those kind of people, okay? We don't want people who aren't going to take this serious and that aren't going to abide by the rules and the regulations because it's sort of like going into an HOA in a smaller way yeah. because they have to sign off on all the rules and regulations to make sure that they're complying and they are checked regularly. They're not just like, oh, here, we have six places for you to live now. We'll see you in about six months. That's not what we do, okay? Claudia, who's our executive director, um, she sets up regular meetings with them. These, these are things that are followed up with her and then she reports to the board and then the board makes decision if there's actions that we have to take. We're always, always open to hearing feedback from any of our neighbors with regards to any issues that they think are gonna happen or that need to be addressed so that we can keep an open dialogue with it. So it's... Yeah, I think well, that's most of the, our concerns is... Sure, I don't blame you. We're I don't wanna live in a community like that either. Right. In the neighborhood. Right. Well, and I had the same problem. I was in front of the city council many times when I had drunks outside of my office building over and over and over again. <laughs> and so I totally understand what you're saying. But that between the board, between our executive director, between the, you know, Melissa's kind of our project manager on this and has worked her butt off. Um, we constantly bring this stuff before the board for all of us to discuss because we all do live in this community and we want to see it progress forward, not to go backwards and not have a safe environment for our people. And we that's exactly happening in California. Oh, hell yeah. And, yeah, I totally understand. <laughs> <laughs> I totally understand. You really don't want to go through that. Did you have any? We've got the city of Globe and the town of Miami's police chiefs on our board, both of them. This is true too. Okay, one of the worst days of my existence because i was one of the founding members of gila house along with fetterman one of the worst days i ever had was to have to go up to a lady's apartment who we were renting on her behalf and let her know that if her boy spent boyfriend spent one more night because that was against the rules that we'd have to ask her and her children to move because we had agreed that nobody spends the night we were taking care of her and her two or three children that was the, one of the worst things i personally did was to say we have a deal and we have an agreement. And if you can't meet it, we're going to have to ask you to move. That's how tough we are. You know, we're a hand up, not a hand out. Again, we, we, we don't take anybody walking in off the street. There's a, there's a process that they have to go through to meet with Claudia. They fill out the application. We get tons of background information. And to, to us, a background check and a drug test really does tell us a lot. Okay? You're not going to find somebody coming in to... to the, you know, I'm not telling you what we're hoping to do. I'm only, going to I'm only telling you what we have a track record and have done. And we're not going to change our ways as far as who we let into these, our properties. Now, what, what if somebody comes in with kids? Uh, well, we we'll, put them in, we'll put them in one of the houses. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the other thing is, is we're trying to expand our services to be able to offer it to a larger variety of people, right? Like I said, for single people or a couple versus people who just have children. But the good part of that is, we're talking about a small enough number that they can be managed and dealt with. We're not talking about a large apartment complex with 300 units down in the valley where someone can lie to you and sneak someone in and you would never know. That's not the case. With what we have to monitor and what we're doing at this particular point in time, we're able to keep track of that and to make sure that we can cut off the problems 90% of the time before they even come up. Okay. Okay. We've yeah. helped people get jobs. We've had classes on balancing checkbooks. We've done so many different things you would have thought we learned in high school. But Claudia and Morton and Melissa, everybody has had their pet projects along the way as to how do we help you get back on your feet. And that's all we try to do. Yeah, I, I have no problem with that as long as they 
They no, respect you. You want to know that your area is still going to be safe and secure, and I don't blame you. I yeah. mean, that's why I started getting into the, some of the things I did in, in the city, is because I do have to live here, want to live here, and I don't want to see the town deteriorate. And so that's another reason that this apartment or this old hotel is a good thing, because it is at some point in time <laughs> not going to be a good thing if something doesn't start happening with it. Something is going to happen at some point in time just from its age, from... Like I said, some of the people that we have floating around town, like you were talking about, you know, there's only so much of that you can monitor. Someone's not sitting there 24-7, right? Yeah, I know. So getting someone in there decreases the potential of those issues coming up as well. You know, we're just concerned that there, some of these people, they move in. The next next week, it's trash, you know? It's it's just junk all no, over we the do, place. No, we do regular maintenance on Red our cars. units. We do, you won't see... You won't see vehicles that are not registered and can't run and trash piles and baby diapers up to here and drug needles in the parking lot. You're not going to see that. That is not this kind of project. Like I said, this is not a, this is not a, this is to help current community people that are not experiencing the technical difficulties like what you are yeah. having. That's not the kind of person we're looking for for our projects. Okay. Okay. Does that help? A plus is, is there's an office and an apartment in the front corner of that building, and I, my memory's right. We expect somebody to manage it from right there. So they'll be actually on site, not letting things get, get out of control. Okay. I look at, when, when I'm sitting in your chairs, I look at what, what would I think of if this was in my neighborhood. And, and if this was in my neighborhood where I live, I don't know, because I, I know what's going on. I, I, would, I would trust them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Du Bois, when did you receive your notice? You got your notice yesterday. Do you feel you had ample time to review all the information? All righty. Do you feel you had enough time to review it? Um, the halfway, I mean, the, the Gila House, sorry, not halfway, the Gila House, and to come up with questions that would satisfy your concerns and okay yes sir the security cameras and everything to try to break into his building i've been lucky they haven't tried to break into my building but they stole a bunch of stuff out of the back Plus, I'm tired of picking up garbage from both ends. Those people coming in and out of a, of a down that street, they just seem to get to my place from Circle A, and that's where the garbage goes next to my, my lot. And the other property owners, can you go back to, I'm sorry. The other property owners, do you, they make their concerns to you that um, they were concerned about the Gila house? They were just wanting to talk, you know, okay. listen to questions. I mean, you can't read it, get anything from a piece of paper. You got to talk to the, the people who are doing it. All right. All right. I just want to make sure you get your questions answered, sir. I did. Okay. All right. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So we have two people representing, and each one of them received their notice one day and two days. Right. Uh, Chairwoman, Commissioners, so from a planning perspective, we'd like to know that we've done better notification or, or have given more time for people to have digested and start a dialogue with staff, too. So just uh, not too sure on how you feel, but I do think from that perspective, uh, additional time would be beneficial for those neighbors. Um, perhaps also we as you saw in your application packet we have a very limited uh, narrative or explanation of the use though I think we've mm -hmm. learned a lot tonight yes I think uh, perhaps documenting that um, information or just exactly how what you explained this evening and if security is involved or whatever ultimately um, would be helpful to have with in the file as well yes sir. as far and answer the the neighbors question so <clears throat> I'm not sure how the commission feels, but if you wish to continue um, this item to another day to grant additional time for those neighbors to um, finish their discussion and convene, we would want to do that date specific. Okay. 
Is there anyone else who has concerns, wants to voice an opinion? Yes, ma'am. Just make sure you get to the microphone. If he's going to document, so give us more information on like transitional, uh, it's going to start out with six, supposedly six apartments, then maybe build up into more. Um, it would be nice if it would all, it'd be written down so we could read it. You know, all the stuff that they said they're going to do, it would be nice if it was written down. Transitional housing, what it means, uh, what are the conditions of the permit? What's it going to do to the properties around us? Yes, ma'am. Up real nice. It's, it's going to be a, it's going to be great. But like the gentleman here said, as long as they're not trashing the neighborhood, it'll be wonderful. Alrighty. Um, I have a question though for um, either Mr. Nye or um, I can't remember your name, ma'am. <laughs> Melissa. Um, the the property that is there right now. Um, when when it's fixed up, do you anticipate um, having the expansion done within a certain amount of time? And how long do you have for that grant? Because what I hear is that this is a great idea. But I also want to give other people an opportunity to voice their concerns. Um, but I also don't want you guys to miss out of your opportunity of the grant. I understand that that is a time-sensitive thing as well. So how long do you have for your grant, and how long do you think before you do your expansions? If, if we receive the grant, um, then we have two years to, okay. they'll give, they give us two years to uh, complete the project, get all the final paperwork in, do the reporting. Um, so... But if it was delayed, this part, there's a lot of parts to it. But if this part was delayed another 30 days, it would not, it would not affect the grant. Oh, it would not affect no, the grant? No, because I, I, I have already called uh, okay. the project manager in the Valley to tell her about the fire, about the issues that uh, we know with the mail and that kind of stuff. So okay. She knows that we're in the process. So... So that this part would be okay. Okay. Okay, sounds good. That, that, that was my question. Does anyone else have questions? I just want to make a comment. I, I think um, the last dialogue that took place really clarified things for me because I'm very familiar with what we're talking about. Uh, transitional homes, that uh, phrase is also known as T-homes, which were used to be called halfway homes or halfway houses, and that's nothing... We're not, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about actual, literal, transitional homes, helping people in those certain situations. So I think that really helped to clarify uh, what we're talking about and what, what you're looking at uh, operating and what, what, um, what it'll bring there because that's what some other citizens may be concerned about because we already have problems in most cities now with, with the homeless we've talked about and all. But this is... Um, I just I appreciate that because it really clarified things and what you meant by transitional housing because like I said there there are T homes which which are a whole different set and that's not the clientele or the need you're you're filling so I think I think that's that uh, probably helped um, the people that question this the businesses in the area and so forth. Yeah, sir. Um, I just have one more comment to add on to that. If if our insurance allowed us right now, the way it is, to have somebody uh, on residence, we would, but they don't allow us. We check as much as possible um, and check the rooms, and we are con we have been broken into. Mm. We're trying. That's why we're the trying to do that. Yes. And then we can once the electric and that kind of stuff is, we'll we will. And this has gone before the board yet. It'll go before the board. We'll have probably have a resident manager or at least a resident that's looking out for what we're doing there. Yes. Can you pass him the mic, please? <clears throat> I wish we had pictures of what the property was like before we bought it because the weekend after we bought it, there was a work crew over there. The rose bushes were trimmed up. The parking lot was cleaned up. The place was swept. And I mean, it was really cleaned up. We've already got 
250, 300 gallons of paint ready to go to, to really start doing some things on the outside of it and stuff. But as far as a caretaker of the property, we're taking care of it a lot better than it was taken care of before we bought it. I can yeah. attest to that. Yeah. Okay. I pass by that all the time. So Thank you. Yeah. All right. So um, if there's no more questions, no more comments, we can move this to, oh, we can end, right? We can end the... It depends. Now, if um, the commission is interested to uh, provide additional public comment, I would um, move to table this public hearing to a date specific. That way the public hearing still open. That date comes okay. up and that time comes up, people can come back up and, and speak. For sure, so yes. If that's the direction you're going, let mm -hmm. me know. Uh, I, I think that that's a good direction, but... Yeah, I, I would... I would I would think, I know that you mentioned you might not be available next month. Maybe we could meet before the end of this month. If you want to look at your calendars, uh, at, I'm thinking 28th or the 30th. That's a Monday, June 28th, or the 30th, which is a Wednesday, the last day of the month. Monday, the 30th. You gotta use your microphone. Yeah, yeah. you have to mm -hmm. train a backup. Um, y'all don't want to do it on. Um, okay. Wednesday the thirtieth. Is that what you mean? It's a Wednesday. It's not gonna work for me, but it's okay. Yeah. And then no, I I fly off. <laughs> yes. What I I'm just saying I work that day, but it's okay because um, as long as there's plenty of people, that's what matters. And I I feel that it's a a good cause, just the same. So. You know, or if it were the 29th, Danny's going to be in here for council. We could take the room next door. Well, the you'll, you'll be here for the 28th, right? The, oh, the, okay, but you're here for the 29th, but you're not here for the 30th. Oh, okay. I'll be returning to work on the 29th and be available after that. Okay. Um, I will be here on the 1st. <laughs> but but it's okay i think it's a good i think it's a good cause i think there'll be plenty of people and i've heard a lot of good information so what do you think about the 29th then there'll be a council budget meeting going on in here we can just set up next door it's going to be tight yeah depending on how many people show up yeah i would love to i just i work oh monday, 29th I'm yeah sorry. i work monday I tuesday wednesdays so i i try to get off every wednesday because i don't know when we're doing them but this week i this that week i work on wednesday but um if we the week before i don't <laughs> so the 23rd that would give everybody a week's time to receive their letter and i'm out of town all next week oh dana so i was going to say why are you we trying could to take go a remotely <laughs> we could go remotely in um july okay i think for them the earlier the better right and I think as, as far as the residents that received their letters, which received them yesterday or the day before, they should have plenty of time to review or call the Gila House to get more information. Okay. Uh, what do we think about, uh, so the 8th of <laughs> July, a Thursday, July 8th? Mm-hmm. on vacation, now. Back up. No, so you to, to as long as we can get Bill. Yeah, yeah. I'll make. Yeah, I'll, I can do it. Seven, uh, eight, the eighth, July eighth. Um, I'll be remote. I'll be remote. I'm so okay. sorry, y'all. Maybe a Zoom meeting. We could do Zoom meeting. Yeah, we'll have to do a Zoom meeting, but we'll have. But Daniel will be here for the public that shows up. Okay. I could be on the road, couldn't I? Yeah. Okay. I was, you just need to say. Ask questions. Are you good with that? All right. If we can Andy, make you're the good motion. To okay. Thank you. Well, and then in the meantime, can you please prepare that detailed narrative? The responding exactly what you've said this evening would be very helpful 
and uh, we'll distribute that. If you can send that over by uh, next, uh, let's see, 16th, uh, maybe by the Friday the 25th, or around there, call me if there's a delay or anything like that. We want to make sure we get it in everybody's hands, and then I, I, I feel very good about it. And the, the YouTube video, you can just pull that down and, and have that as a reference. Voice recognition. Yeah. Have it transcribed. All right. All right. I move. He did it as an FAQ. To, uh, Thursday, July 8th at 6 p.m. I second that motion. All righty. Um, then let's take it to a vote. Um, to vote to table this meeting to Thursday, July 8th at 6 p.m. Um, I'll vote yes. All right. So all in favor? And we will have this one tabled till then. Motion passes unanimously. All righty. We will now move a on. A side note, then we can bring that back on to the 13th for um, council approval. No council. This is it. Oh, no council? All right, then. Good. I'll tell the mayor. Awesome. So now we'll move on to the next item of business. Planning and Zoning Commission will review a request for an on-site construction trailer during the period of an active building permit and discusses a possible text amendment to the zoning code to allow such use. Thank you very much, Chairwoman Commissioners. In your staff packets, you have a memorandum from myself explaining a request that we have with the city and uh, referring to an attached letter that we received uh, from an individual that's interested to build a home uh, in the community or to locate a home in the community. Um, so when we had that request I've had similar requests previously and this is a common topic that comes up in communities uh, I'm aware of ordinances that allow people who would like to build or have security on their property while they build their home to locate a construction trailer there for the period of the construction or during the active building permit phase. Uh, we'd like to not confuse this with somebody that wants to live on a property, in a, on a single family lot within an RV. That's not allowed. Um, it's, we allow RV uh, uses in RV parks where they're designated, where they're zoned for it. Designated. Other than that, you shouldn't see people living on a lot in an RV hooked up, whether it be a principal structure on the property uh, and somebody's renting or living in an RV on that same property, uh, basically it's just you're not allowed to reside in a recreational vehicle or a camper or a campsite on a single family lot in the municipality. And that's pretty consistent in any community. Most counties are pretty caught up to that as well. Uh, so that said, we kind of, uh, that's the one cautionary uh, element in looking at an ordinance like this how we want to make sure that we don't have a situation where we're allowing people to live on properties and that's why it's tied to that building permit during the purpose of an active building permit and um, so as you see in this request written request gentlemen I said a few things we've been speaking with him for some time now uh, uh, a few months he wants to locate a manufactured home in an area one of the few areas that they're allowed in the city and uh, I'll quickly just show you as an example of well, this particular property as an example um, just to put it in a context for you and give you a little color uh, so and as I mentioned I've had the request previously no one really got uh, really was adamant about it until this gentleman um, and I, like I said, I know that this could be an ordinance that you could implement uh, to be consistent or helpful to people in this situation. Uh, and the same actually applies for a commercial, large commercial development where they actually locate a, uh, a trailer or GC on site and might reside in it. I don't know if they actually do, but if they're building a large commercial building or something like that, or a fifth wheel or something like that, because of our remoteness, I could see the, how that could, that could benefit the community. So this is the parcel he bought. It's nine acres. 
it's across a wash down Maya Street. And um, this area is just a very remote wash corridor. But it's all zoned in the city as TR, transitional zoning, with a MH1 or R1-MH overlay, which is a very unique zoning district. And this has nothing to do with the policy that we'll talk about in a second. It just happens to be the property that this gentleman bought. Uh, it has that manufactured home overlay. That manufactured home overlay uh, is a really interesting ordinance. Um, basically, at some point, a council, a prior council said, you know, we need to allow for manufactured homes someplace on really large lots. If they can make it look like a appear as though it's a single family home. And it has to be multi-sectional. So we have this comp this detailed code into how you do that. And that's the overlay that applies here. So anyway, that's why it's a manufactured home. You won't see or hear that very often because we have very few manufactured home zoning uh, districts in the community but that this area is one of those areas where they can do that they've done that not too long there's been some recent manufactured homes constructed and there's a lot of regulations on locating manufactured homes and the age of them they have to be within six years uh to be placed there and so forth this particular gentleman's waiting for a factory to be built so they can build his home so anyway long story short he comes in i need to do some grading i want to prep my lot I, i've got an rv my wife has medical issues we need to live on the lot while i prep it and meaning make the space grub, do some grading and drainage uh, improvements. Uh, as you can see, it's along a large wash and put pull in utilities, public sewer and water, which is run which run in this area, uh, as well as electrical. So when we start to put all those things together, we think, okay, you basically you have an RV, you want to go out there and do this work. That sounds great. Um, now you have a full hookup is what I, how we would call that in the RV world. You all of a sudden have a full hookup for your RV. Once you have sewer and water on the property, um, you, know, that's, you can live on that property. So that, that became concerning. We had a further discussion. It was, well, I'm not quite ready for the, tr the manufactured home to come in yet. It might be a year and a half. And then that gets very concerning for me. Now, all of a sudden, we've got somebody living on a lot. If we do, and I'm getting way ahead of our discussion tonight. But that, so that's what we're trying to safeguard ourselves from, is having people living on lots that are building houses. Um, so anyway. Uh, we did some research, like I mentioned, this is definitely a um, ordinance that could benefit the community and people wanting to build homes. Yeah. Quickly did some uh, research on communities uh, that have this. I looked right around here. Gila County has an ordinance that allows that. Um, that's the very first one you see. They put a time limitation of six months which uh, not many houses get built in six months, especially up here. Uh, so that's very limited. Uh, we like, again, if it's tied to a permit, now it's that permit in the building code, which is very detailed in what's a legitimate inspection and what, how to keep that permit rel uh, active. It's it can cost, right? They have to go pay for uh, a reactivation. Uh, at some point, it times out. They have to apply for an entirely new permit. When something like that happens, then you're like, well, the trailer, you're not building right now, so you've got to remove yourself from the property. So anyway, you have those examples. Apache Junction uh, allows eight-month time frame. Uh, Fountain Hills is the place I have the uh, experience. We never really had issues out there. It was mostly people building very large custom homes and their, their contractor in a fifth wheel on the property. So... Um, they were always wanting to get out of there. So anyway, that's uh, some general ideas that are implemented nearby um, that we, the staff feels could be beneficial to the community. Uh, we do, we are using this gentleman's particular request to force our, policy, our uh, conversation on this. Uh, but how, how this would work is we ask the Planning and Zoning Commission, as I'm doing this evening, are you interested in this or do you want to discuss you know, details or anything about this? And ultimately, do, will the does the commission agree, yes, we should maybe look at considering an ordinance and initiating an ordinance to address this particular this issue? So that's why I'm here this evening. And the process would, if you were interested, say, yeah, we, we like that idea, Dana. Move forward on something. I draft language 
Um, we hold just like a rezoning. We have to hold citizen review meetings. I would come back to you after I draft that language and say, hey, you like this? Are we going in the right direction? We are, Dana. Let's initiate that. Go ahead and advertise it. Hold the required public meetings and start that amendment, text amendment process, which would take about a month and a half, two months uh, from the time you took action. So that's why I'm here uh, with this particular agenda item tonight, just to feel if you see the need, want to talk about it, um, and how you'd like to proceed forward so currently it's stated six months currently we have no ordinance oh no these ordinance. are three yeah we don't even allow it so just the gila county gila county here apache junction has an ordinance and fountain hills you have those three examples of okay. similar types of ordinances and like i said i would lean towards strictly keeping it attached to an active building permit instead of time, other time limitations or we could look at a combination of both Okay. Just to make sure we don't have somebody living on a lot for a year and a half in their RV and not making any progress. Though they're just paying to extend their business, other uh, building permit. But usually you would know after a year and a half if you're actually going to build a house. Mm -hmm. Or I've shown some meaningful progress. So, uh, so Commission, is this uh, a direction or an ordinance you'd be interested to uh, initiate look look at further um i think it's something to think about i i'm not big into controlling every aspect of how people run their property but it's definitely something to look into before i decide that this is something that i would like to further move towards so I don't know. This is my opinion. Keep in mind right now, they can't have it on at all. It's a no. You can't go live on your property. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. There you I like the idea of it. I think it does give more, uh, I think it's encouraging to uh, people who are interested in real I know that there's been a lot of the valley is just exploding in size, and a lot of people are trying to get away from that. I think this gives uh, people just that flexibility to. I think it's, yeah, it takes a little bit of control away from not having any type of encouragement or you know, uh, ordinance allowing it. But I think it would be really neat. I can save some money if I do set up some type of. I think it could help out with maybe some of the, you know, some vacant, old vacant properties out there that need to be out. I personally think this would be, uh, and I think also too is that, you know, the county has something already in place with Gila County. Yeah, you know, municipalities like Apache County, the people of Hills. I think this kind of brings us in alignment with that are growing and, yeah, I think it just improves. And then I like the idea of it being tied to a on the Yeah. End. Well, I'm just going to kind of, around and just kind of self up here but it would have to be something in the game by apply for a building have a plan in place clearing it at least or whatever it is um, one concern i have though is um a little far ahead here but i know you mentioned that this gentleman mr howard that wrote this note that I brought up this whole topic. Um, he said it might be a year to a year and a half. I wonder because if it's a manufactured home, I know that the price of building material tripled in certain regards. I'm wondering who we are backed up. That makes me wonder like that. I don't know. It's just kind of a maybe it's more much. Chairwoman and Commissioner Dernan, the, so the conversation, the last conversation I had was, well, I need to get the money together, and then apparently there's a delay in manufacturing the actual home, um, so it would be like a year and a half, and that's the first time we had heard that length of time gap between wanting to be on site tomorrow in the RV and and when an actual house might come onto the property. So I've heard more recently, apparently, a conversation today that he's ready to go and he's ready to accelerate that. I think if we look at an ordinance that would allow him to live on that, that 
that would be built in to that's that time issue that I mentioned is a concern and that's why we would attach it to that building permit um, so if we were to issue a grading permit initially usually you come you want oh, you want to build a house okay great here's how you get your sewer your water taps and then your building permit and that's all at one in one permit but you got to go to the water department to get your tap well he's parsing those out and doing that first which perk my ears on okay well that's the real intention here uh but i think we could craft language in a way to make sure that no matter what at this point you know you're expired and you got to get that rv off the property or store it and you can't live in it um, well what do you call active building because that would need to be defined a permit it's that's defined in the building code okay it has to be a legitimate active so you go pull your building permit for your house and now you can go build your house and in six months, if the city doesn't get a call for a meaningful inspection, and that's defined, your first inspection is like the foundation, pre-plumbing. -pre you know, they dig out. If, they're, if, they, if they miss that, their permit then could expire, or they got to go pay for an extension. So then it becomes this cost thing. But I've seen people drag that out for like a year and a half, two years, keep on paying that, and then eventually it's like, all right, you know, we're just not organized or don't have money. And we got to walk away. Um, but when that permit then expires, it's like, all right, you're done. You're out of here. So what these communities have done is said, you know what? We don't, you know, in addition to active building permit, let's give you a time frame. And I think maybe yeah. we look at doing that. Saying no more than a, you know, there, I was surprised that, like I said, it, it takes a while to build a house, especially out here if you're doing it yeah. yourself. So it doesn't take a while to set a manufactured home. Uh, so I would say we would look at, maybe we look at a year period. That that could possibly happen with the possibility and this is all administratively approved i would suggest mm -hmm. and then maybe with the ability for one extension for an additional six months that way they know you know there's no surprise everybody in the community has the same opportunity but when you know if you can't get together in a year and a half well, maybe it's time to go start over again or move on so that's how, that's how i looked at that or think about that I, um, I think building and, stru and construction will increase, um, like the other commissioner was saying, um, and I think it'd be good for us to really look this over and, and kind of get a precedent um, for future, uh, especially the way the world is now. It, you know, just talking about this property earlier, it's kind of nice to have somebody there to look things over and keep an eye, security, all of that. Um, so I... I, I like this, and I think it's something. Plus, we're kind of it shows, you know, we're we're kind of keeping up with some of the other areas and 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 innovation and thinking and development too. We do get requests, occasional. Nobody's really dug in, but I do. Like I said, I see the need. The commission agrees there's no action tonight you can just direct staff yeah go ahead and prepare some language and schedule a time for you guys to consider to initiate it down all right here. maybe we'll try and get that on the 13th unless we're all busy <laughs> oh yeah the 13th i'm sorry the uh he said the, the eight, 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 eight yeah eight. we're gonna try and get that on there i'll get some language on there for you all right sounds good and if you don't want to initiate it or make a change or something and just a city manager prerogative real quick I, I i believe that you know this council in in this city is supportive of growing our housing stock and getting more people you know more livable spaces quality livable spaces so we building permits are very much in, in force now um and uh so the other thing is you're still having one person on the property whether they're living in the trailer building the home or they moved to the home and, and abandoned the trailer it's it's not the same as a home with a trailer with two living locations so it's just a the the way they live on the property not so much the fact you have multiple people living the, the the restrictions on living in an rv is to make sure you don't have multiple um locations on one property and, and this would not violate that concept i have a quick city manager question if i can ask and just because sanitation was brought up earlier is there a landfill here or is every because the trucks i see come from phoenix no we, there is a we do have a landfill the county has landfill very close but rad does haul to phoenix at their prerogative that's their choice i was just curious we don't you know require that. them to dump here 
I know there's only so much private land, so I was just curious about that. Um, but there is one, okay. Interesting. I'm just curious, what are your thoughts? I mean, am I okay to ask? Well, is this on, well, is it about the, the, yes, the, the yeah, that one was way off the agenda, but on the rest. No, it's, it's actually in regards to the, um, but on on the idea of a, of this future ordinance, I think that would be appropriate. The the, the I was question. Just curious, yeah, I was just curious, what, like maybe what minutes before on it here. Yeah. Go oh, yeah. Go ahead. Hey. Thank you, Ian. Um, I've been working with Mr. Howard, as has uh, Dana, for the last few months, and he he just really wants to start developing his property. He understands that the manufactured home um, in, in is delayed. There, it will be here in 18 months, and that's also because not just uh, supplies, but the plant that it's going to be built on is actually being built. So he's waiting for the plant to be built so his home can be built, and and he's he's ready to start working. He seems, of course, he's very eager. And at this point, if if uh, our planning and zoning commission doesn't doesn't see a future for an ordinance uh, like this then he he's ready to get his grading permit so he can begin work and not not move his mo or his his motor home on site so he's he's very focused on his development but you know looking at the bigger picture is this coming down the pipeline yes it is and especially our uh, council is Pro annexation, and there there are areas um, that that developers are looking at that are currently not in the city limits, and I so I do see that this could be a future trend, and I always would love to be proactive rather than reactive, and so I I appreciate the commission considering this very much, and on behalf of Mr. Howard, I'm sure he's very very um, happy that this this could be a possibility. So thank you. I was thinking too about like general contractors. I'm mm -hmm. trying to get chip in folks, maybe be able to make it a little bit to them or a little bit more. Anyhow. All right. Are there any more comments? Questions? All right. We will have a motion to close, uh, adjourn. Yeah. Okay, we're going to have a motion to adjourn the meeting. Excellent. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Oops. Second. second it? Oh, 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 I, 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 I thought that was, okay, so you asked for the motion and I second. Okay. All right, awesome. All right, so.